All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be looking at a uh, uh, different standard, but it does go with ecosystems, with which is what we talked about last week. Um, we're going to be looking at 5L2.2, and that, of course, is classifying organisms within an ecosystem uh, according to their function uh, that they would serve, uh, such as producers, consumers, and decomposers. All right. So we're going to basically be able to recognize plants as producers um, that make or produce their own energy from the sun, which would be, of course, of, of course photosynthesis, um, and also be able to identify consumers as animals um, that get energy or consume. They take in uh, other organisms. All right. So, of course, we do have some vocabulary. So before we get to the vocabulary, we want to think of this essential question. Why are producers, consumers, and decomposers necessary in an ecosystem? So here, of course, is some vocabulary. So please feel free to pause this video at any time so you can get the vocabulary and write it down. Again, science uh, is predominantly vocabulary, uh, of which you will need to know uh, for your EOG. So definitely get these down in your notebook. First, we have organism. An organism is an individual living thing. Then we have a population. That is, of course, a group of individuals of the same species inhabiting the same area. We have community. That's a group of interacting species living in the same place. We have two words which uh, we have seen on EOGs, and that is biotic, which means living, and then abiotic, which is not living, okay, or non-living. Therefore, um, it's not from a uh, something that, of course, is living, all right? So it's abiotic, not living, non-living, biotic, which is living, okay? Next we have producer, which are plants that make their own food. Consumers, organisms that get energy by consuming or eating other organisms. Decomposers, those are organisms that decompose or break down materials into nutrients used for the soil. Um, and before I discuss the other three, um, think of, if you were to think of um, music, right? A producer is someone that makes the beats, okay? The consumer would be the artist or the rapper or uh, singer that would then use those beats um, take those beats, of course, and create their own music, right? They would, they would uh, uh, not consume it. They wouldn't really eat the lyrics, but you get what I'm saying. Um, a consumer is someone or something that would uh, use. Uh, think of it like this. If you go to a supermarket with uh, your, your parents or guardians or whomever, you are considered a consumer. You are shopping. You're using a, a place that is producing their goods for you to buy, for you to take in, right, um, and whatever it may be. So they try to relate these science terms with with terms and, and, and other things that uh, you can understand uh, with a real-life type of situation, okay? Um, now, uh, we have herbivores, right, which has a root word there, herb, right? If you think of what herbs are, they're plants. So an animal that feeds on plants is an herbivore. That's all they eat. They are considered an herbivore. An omnivore could be people and animals and organisms such as yourself, uh, me, other animals, because we feed on plants and other animals, right? We, we, we eat meat. We also eat plants. Uh, if you solely eat plants and you don't eat any meat, you'd be considered an herbivore, right? If you're a person or an animal that only eats meat or other animals, that you would be considered a carnivore, right? Think of carny, right? Carne. Uh, Sometimes if you go to restaurants and you get uh, carne asada, right? Carne asada is basically meat. It's steak, right? It's a way that the steak is prepared, okay? Um, all right. So, again, different ways for you to try to remember these. Please pause at any time so you can get these vocabulary words down. Next we have, which we're going to talk about uh, later on, is a food chain. A food chain is a series of organisms that are dependent. They rely on the next uh, organism as a source of food, okay? Uh, it's basically like a chain. If you were to think of a real chain, 
they have something called links, right? They link and connect together to form a chain. Therefore, a food web is a bunch of food chains, right? It's a group of them. They all interlock together, but um, it's a system of interlocking and interdependent food chains. They do rely on other organisms, okay? If you were to think about a spider web, right? A spider web is not typically just one line. No, it's a bunch of, or a series of uh, lines that a spider would have woven together to create now a connecting web, okay? Connecting lines. Uh, energy pyramid, right? A triangle representing the nutritional level at which solar energy is passed onto organisms in an ecosystem. Plants, of course, are at the very bottom of the pyramid, all right? So they would get their energy, and we're going to talk about this, of course, but they would get their energy, of course, from water, from sunlight, from soil, right? And then that would then uh, continue to where animals or organisms that eat the plants, they rely on that. So the plant would end up being the, the beginning source. And then um, the consumers would now eat those plants, which are producers. And then it continues with that ch uh, chain uh, or... Uh, energy pyramid uh, that we talk about. Okay. All right. Next, we have primary and we secondary and tertiary. That's how you pronounce that. Tertiary. Primary is the first eater in a food chain. Those are the ones that eat plants. Then you have a secondary. Those are the ones that eat the primary consumers. And then we have tertiary. Those are the ones that eat the secondary consumers that eat the primary consumers. So tertiary are those. Uh, Organisms, and we're going to talk more about that later on. Okay. So, again, we're going to look at classifying these organisms. Why are producers, consumers, and decomposers necessary in an ecosystem? I want you to take a look at this video. Ecology, the study of the interaction between living and non living things. Ecology all begins with an organism, which is a living thing. The example we're going to see is of the fox. So an organism can be represented by one single fox. A fox is a living thing. But is an organism the sun? No, the sun is non-living and is not an organism. So to recap, an organism is one living thing. But if I wanted to make an organism fit the definition of a population, I'd have to change a few things. I'd have to add more foxes to this picture because a population is a group of the same organisms. So a population would be a group of foxes all living together. But would one single rabbit be a population? Mm. No, a rabbit by itself is an organism. A group of rabbits would be a population. So to recap, a population is a group of the same organisms living together. But if I wanted to make a population a community, we'd have to change a few things. In a community, you still have the population of foxes, but you also have other populations that the fox might come across. A population of rabbits, a population of snakes, even a population of birds. And don't forget, plants are living things too. A population of trees also help to define a community. A community is many populations. So a community includes all the populations in an area. But would a fish tank be an example of a community? No, a fish tank includes living and non-living things. A community has all living things. So to recap, a community is of many populations living together. But if I wanted to make a community into an ecosystem, we'd have to add a few things. 
An ecosystem includes everything in the community and the non-living things, like sunlight, cloud, rocks, mountains, and temperature. An ecosystem is living and So let's review. An ecosystem includes all the living and non-living things in an area. Would water be an ecosystem? Mm. No, water is just one non-living thing. Now, sometimes in an ecosystem, organisms compete or fight for survival. In this ecosystem, the fox could verse the, the snake when they fight for rabbits. Another example of competition could be the big tree versus a small plant as they fight for sunlight. And all of this is taking place in ecosystems around you. All right. So a little bit about uh, populations, communities, ecosystems, etc. All right. So um, let me just make sure I'm on the right thing here. Okay, cool. So I want us to, to try to understand this. An organism, of course, the description of it would be a living thing. An example would be one deer. Population now is one type of organism that is living in the same habitat or living space, right? That would be a herd of deer. A community would be more than one population living in the same habitat or living space, such as deer, trees, insects, bacteria, mushrooms, wolves, flowers. Those are all, of course, living things. Now, an ecosystem has living and non-living, biotic, abiotic, things in the habitat, such as, again, deers, trees, insects, bacteria, wolves, flowers. But now we add some non-living features, which are sun, lakes, rain, rock, soil, snow. Okay. So again, notice how it progresses from organism to a population, to a community, to ecosystems. So take a look at this picture here. And of course, notice the, the arrows are kind of faded, but you can kind of get it. First, it starts with an organism, right? We're going to say that's like a, a bison or, or a buffalo of some sort. Let's just say a buffalo. Okay. So we have a buffalo there, one buffalo. That would be one living organism. A herd of buffalo, now they're all the same species, but a herd of them would be a population, right? A group of them. Then that population, that group grows to where it's part of a community, which is, again, uh, quite a few different populations. We see zebras, right? Some gazelles, maybe giraffes, rhinos, right? Then, of course, and, uh, and again, with that, that's in there, we have like groups of trees or or uh, grass or whatever, those are, of course are living organisms. Now we incorporate that to an ecosystem which has living and non-living. So we see in that we have, uh, you know, some gazelles or so running or deer, right? There's the bison, we have giraffe, elephants, we have trees, right? Now non-living, of course, could be sunlight. There's air, right? There's water, okay? Now many ecosystems would then grow to a larger picture, would, which would be the biosphere. Sphere, sphere being a 3D circle, that of course is Earth, right? Earth would be many different ecosystems which have living and non living features, part of it. So notice how it grows starting with an organism, okay? So here, here's another pictorial idea. So think of an organism as was mentioned in the video, is what would be one fox. A group of fox, the foxes rather, would be a population. Then you have those groups of foxes with groups of snakes, groups of trees, groups of birds, groups of rabbits. That would be a community, okay? And then, of course, you put all that with air, water, sunlight, soil. That would be the ecosystem, okay? Now, what I mentioned to students is this. Think of if we – I'm sure you might have heard of something called a gated community, right? What a gated community is is a group of houses or, or – places of residence that is behind a gatehouse or, or in a gate where they all live. Now, you, of course, would be a uh, an organism. You and your family now would be living in a habitat, in an environment, in the apartment, in the house, and you would be a population. Now, it becomes a community when now you have more than one house with different families, different you know people, and you form a community. 
and of course you have then an ecosystem. So I want you to kind of think of that way as well, put that into perspective, okay? All right, now we have um, a, uh, of course, a list of examples of pictures, so take a look, you can pause this, and try to come up with what you think can be, uh, based on the picture, the community, or an ecosystem, or even the habitat, or the population, right? List one example for those four terms, okay? Think about it. All right, here's another thing that you can pause and think about, matching the letter with the number. So you choose the letter of the vocabulary word, community, ecosystem, habitat, population, that best would fit these descriptions there. And of course, there's 10 of them, so think about it and try to come up with it. And let's move on to classifying some organisms now, okay? Oh, let me show you this video. Whoops, sorry. We all eat, right? But have you ever wondered why we eat? I mean, some animals only eat plants, others just eat other animals, and some creatures eat both plants and meat. But the thing is, all animals, including humans, eat. And we don't just eat because we're hungry, or bored, or tired, or it tastes good. Although, I could really go for a slice of pizza right now. We eat because we need food to live. More exactly, we need the energy that food gives our bodies to grow, move, and stay warm. You've probably figured this out already from the things you've heard about how and when we eat. Like, you've probably heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Or you might know that runners will carb load before a big race. But food is necessary for all living things, all the time. You may have noticed that your collection of cool rocks that you have under your bed never needs a lunch of club sandwiches and baby carrots. That's because they're non-living things. But food is most definitely a necessity for animals. And plants too. Even though we don't think of plants as eating, because they don't have mouths, they still need food to grow and repair themselves, just like we do. In fact, plants make a nifty model that can help us understand how the energy from food affects living things. To see how food affects plants, we can test what happens when they get more or less food. Plants get most of their food from the sun, water, and carbon dioxide in the air. More on that another time. But to test how food affects plants for yourself, you can use liquid plant food. That way you can control how much food or nutrients a plant gets. So consider this little investigation. Say you have two little plastic cups filled with potting soil, and you planted a lima bean seed in each one. Then, you give each plant a different amount of food. Plant number one would be your control. That means you don't give it any additional food at all, just a little water and sunlight, and it'll do what plants do all on its own. Then you can make plant two your extra food plant. Ask your parents for some liquid plant fertilizer and add the recommended amount to plant two. Now, if you kept watering and feeding your plants the same amount for, say, four weeks, what do you think? would happen. Would you expect both of the plants to grow the same amount? Or would one grow more than the other? If so, which ones? Well, what you'd find is that plant two grew bigger than plant one. Because living things need food to give them energy, so they can repair themselves and stay healthy, and in this case, grow. So with more food, plant two got more energy, and that allowed it to grow bigger. Now go eat your vegetables. All right. So, and of course, I have another video here. Check it out. Lunch is the best time of day, right? Well, sometimes anyway. But even if lunch turns out to be nasty, like a banana and ketchup sandwich, Blech. if we're really hungry, we'll eat it. That's because we're living things, and all living things need to eat, or really need to eat to get energy in order to survive. But tigers and humans are both living things, and you don't tend to see tigers hanging out at the salad bar. So what's the deal? How do different types of living things get energy? Well, everything starts with the sun. We may slather on the sunblock and pull out the shades when things get too bright, but plants don't. Instead, they do something only a few kinds of living things can do. They catch energy that comes from the sun's rays and they change it into chemical energy, specifically a kind of sugar. Then other living things, like humans, eat the plants and use that sugar as energy in their own bodies. It's like swallowing sunshine, but much tastier. 
and more filling. Scientists classify or group animals based on how they get energy. Some living things get energy by eating mostly plants or parts of plants like fruits or seeds. These animals, like deer and cows, are called herbivores, even though they eat all kinds of plants, not just the herbs that go in pizza sauce. But if you're looking for an animal to split a burger or carne asada taco with, you'll want to call tigers, hawks, or other carnivores, animals that eat mostly meat. While humans, bears, raccoons, and other animals whose diets include both plants and animals are called omnivores. Now you can come up with a really simple model to see how these groups of living things fit together based on how they get energy. Say we're out for a walk. There's sun shining on an apple tree, a raccoon hiding in the tree's branches, some insects munching on the tree's leaves, and a hawk circling over a field nearby. How can you arrange these things in a way that shows how they get energy? Well, first we know that the apple tree doesn't really eat anything. It's a plant, so it can take the sun's energy shining on its leaves, plus some air and water, and make sugar. So what about the animals in this scene? Since the insects are making a salad out of the tree's leaves, it's safe to guess that they're herbivores, plant eaters. The raccoon would be happy eating either the apples from the tree or the insects. Since it eats both plants and other animals, it's the omnivore in this situation. If the raccoon leaves the safety of the tree, it might get picked off by that hawk, a meat-loving carnivore. So as you can see, all living things get energy that starts off with the sun. Plants take this energy and change it into chemical energy. Some animals, herbivores, get their energy by eating mostly plants, while others, the carnivores, get it by eating mostly meat. And omnivores, like humans, get their energy by eating both plants and animals. Now if you'll excuse me, it's time for this omnivore's lunch. Sounds real good right about now. Um, so hopefully, again, you're able to pause this video and you could, of course, go back to get down any of the information um, at, that was shown. Okay, so please definitely do so. All right, so here's something to think about. All right, types of eaters. We have herbivores which mainly eat plants. And as you can see there, elephants, deer, rabbits, right? There's an armadillo, of course, right? So I would make a little chart and even, you know, you could write the names of them, you could draw them, which is totally fine. So you have a better understanding of what an herbivore would be. Then we have an omnivore. You could put like me, you know, like yourself, if you eat plants, if you eat uh, meat, right? Other types, bears, there's some fish. There's pigs, right? They're omnivores. They eat plants and animals. And then you have uh, carnivores, which strictly just eat animals, okay? Insects included. Insects uh, uh, that are eaten um, or insects that eat other insects, those would be considered a carnivore, right? Um, so we have sharks. There's lions, right? A fox, um, you know, cats, everything, stuff of that nature. And some key terms that you definitely need to have what you see there, predator and prey. A predator is an animal that eats another animal, whereas the prey is the animal that gets eaten by the predator. And of course we have uh, this video. Let me just make sure, let me stop there. So we got one more video, so check this out. Not everybody likes the same kind of food, right? That's probably a good thing. I mean, all the more pizza for me. But whether we eat milkshakes or mangoes, pizzas or pears, tacos or toast, we use the energy that's in our food to stay alive. But how did that energy get into our food in the first place? The answer is that energy flows between living things. It's almost like each form of food is a link in a chain. A food chain. You might have heard that humans are on the top of the food chain because we eat pretty much everything and except for the occasional video game monster and maybe the odd bear, nothing tries to eat us. But what is a food chain exactly? A food chain is a model that shows how energy flows between living things. You can think of animals and plants 
plants in the same food chain as all living in the same neighborhood, which scientists call a habitat. And they all have a job to do, interacting with each other day in and day out. Together, they form a kind of system, a self-contained collection of different things that all work together as a whole. And they also interact with the non-living stuff around them, like the water, the air, the ground, and the sun. Put it all together, and what do you get? A special system called an ecosystem. And food change show us what eats what in an ecosystem. Now everything that's alive is in a food chain, including you, my friend. And actually, most living things are in more than one food chain, depending on what or who they're munching on at the moment. I mean, you don't eat the same thing for dinner every night, do you? Didn't think so. Now let's see how a food chain works by making a diagram of how these interactions happen in nature. First, all of the energy that's in a food chain starts with the sun. I can't stress that enough, people. Plants take the energy from the sun's rays and change it into chemical energy. So when a nice patch of lush green grass starts to grow, it's capturing some of the energy from the sun to do it. Then when an animal, like a rabbit, wanders by and nibbles on that grass, the energy from the plant is transferred into the rabbit's body. Now if a hungry hawk decides that the rabbit would make a yummy supper, then the energy from the rabbit is transferred to the hawk. And in this ecosystem, nothing is large or brave enough to take on the hawk. I mean, just look at her! So we've hit the top of the food chain, and we've just made a nifty model of it. So a food chain is a model that shows how energy flows between living things in an ecosystem. Energy in a food chain starts with the sun, which is turned into chemical energy by plants. And this energy moves up the food chain as animals eat the plants, and then other animals eat those animals. And speaking of energy, I'm starving. So I'm off to take my place in the food chain. See you next time. All right, again, I know I'm giving a lot of information, but this is great because you're getting to now see how we talked about ecosystems, we talked about different organisms in ecosystems, and now we're discussing how they are connected, how they interact with each other, how they all play a part uh, in a way for survival, okay? So finally, I want you to get this down, and we, of course, will continue next time. This, of course, would be a food chain, all right? of what a food chain would kind of be like. So a series of organisms dependent on the next, meaning they, they uh, uh, rely on the next organism as a source of food. It shows how energy and nutrients are passed from one organism to another. And also it always begins with plant life. Those are the producers, right? The ones that make um, uh, their own food to then provide that for other organisms. And it ends with animal life. So notice their energy source, okay? The very first thing would be the sun, right? That helps uh, with the plants, of course, to grow. The plants being the producer. Then we have the primary consumer, the first ones that interact and, and eat what is being produced, they consume. Those are herbivores, right? The animals, the organisms that eat plants. Then you have a secondary consumer, which is uh, the predator, it also could be the prey, and it's an omnivore, right? Birds, of course, would be an example of that. They would eat plants. They would also eat uh, insects. Those are uh, an animal. Um, and then, of course, you have the fox, which would be considered a predator, right? They eat the meat, which would be the bird. And those are considered the tertiary consumers, right? The ones that eat the secondary consumers. And then, of course, Afterwards, they become de decomposers. They break down. They, they uh, in a way, end up dying. And then the bacteria, of course, uh, goes into the soil, decomposes, and breaks down into the soil, and then begins a whole new uh, cycle of life. So that, of course, would be the food chain. All right? So we're going to stop here, of course. I hope you were able to, uh, like I mentioned, pause the video and get what is needed. Um, and as always, you know, of course, strive for greatness, keep working hard, and make sure you are reviewing every single night, reviewing these vocabulary words, reviewing the definitions, making sense of this stuff. All right. Until next time, have a great day.